final session of this centenary test is about to start. It's been a wonderful game. A key to Randall. And the field for Court is he? He's walked. He's gone. Randall. Caught by Cozier. Well, there's a bit of poetic justice. Cozier taking an absolutely brilliant catch of the bowling O'Keefe. O'Keefe. Field for leg before, and he's out. Eva, leg before to O'Keefe for four. Eight for 385. That's it, it's LBW, Alan Knott is out. Lily has struck again to finish off this test match. And Australia triumphing by a margin of 45 runs. Don't you love looking at those pictures? Yes, it's 40 years, almost to the day, since that famous centenary test. And what a joy and a privilege to have one of the game's brightest stars, both on and off the field, Kerry O'Keefe. I can't begin to tell you how happy I am to see you. It's a pleasure to see you too, Tony, and great to be on the back page. I mean, uh, a few years ago, I asked my colleague, Peter Roebuck, I'd had a bit of success on ABC Radio, if I was a stock, would you buy me? He'd say, cautiously. <laughs> <laughs> and in the last 12 months, there's been a lot of sellers. <laughs> Thank you for buying. Yeah, I'm a buyer. I'm a buyer. <laughs> Thanks, Look, Matt. I want to get to the uh, the test that's just gone in Pune with yes. you in a minute. But just going back to those images, your memories of that that test blurred. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but look, uh, fantastic game. Uh, same uh, margin as a hundred years before. Mm. Um, I took those vital wickets. Uh, <laughs> you know, uh, the nude nut lives. <laughs> <laughs> and they were both bat pads, um, yep. Tony Gregg and um, Derek Randall batting with wafers. In today's <laughs> game, they'd have gone for four through mid-wicket. <laughs> but uh, fabulous uh, few days. Did you have any sense at the time how big a game it was? It wasn't just another game of cricket, was it? You know, looking back on it now, it's one of the great moments in Test cricket. Did it have that at the time or was it just another intense contest? No, Spencer, it did because they'd assembled everybody that played for England uh, against Australia and vice versa in Melbourne for that period. And the nets were on the ground of the MCG and every morning players going to nets, 10,000 people applauded each player as he arrived at the nets. Mm. I knew we were part of something very special. And it was spooky that the margin ended up being the same. What also could have been a little bit spooky for you is opening the batting in the second yes. innings. How was that? Um, Greg Chappell asked me to open when Dennis Lilly got the final wicket. Uh, uh, he said, I could have told you last night, but I thought I'd give you nine minutes to get nervous. This is because Rick McCosker obviously had broken his jaw. He said he did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I never saw x-rays. <laughs> Somebody did say he was on life support, but <laughs> it was only a rumour. <laughs> Anyone can wear a bandage. Yes. <laughs> but I did open the... And if Greg had told me the night before, maybe I wouldn't have had 12 VBs and four rum and coke. <laughs> yes. well, yes. Actually, Kerry, I was going to ask yeah. you, is your memory blurred? Because what was the recovery after every day of a test like that? I mean, back in those days, what did you guys do after a, a, each day of play? Oh, well, at six o'clock, Doug... What, Doug Walters would light a Rothman's king-size filter and knock the top off a beer. That was rehydration. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't quite get it myself. <laughs> but that was the way it was. They, we waltzed. And I know too much is made of that, but it was a different era, of mm. course. I applaud, the, I applaud the modern era. Before we get into that modern era, I know we've got thousands of questions to ask you about current stuff. Though. There's one other image that's very, very famous. is the meeting of the Queen yes. uh, in, in the lineup, and you were standing yeah, next to Dennis Lilly. Just talk us through this. Well, uh, he offered her an Aluminium bat sponsorship <laughs> contract. <laughs> There's, Rick McCosker. There's Rick. I still think there was nothing broken. <laughs> but he pulled it off. <laughs> so Dennis asked for an autograph? Yeah. And she says, I don't do yeah. that? Or No, I, I, I think his chest hair was getting in the way and she was just recoiled. <laughs> or was it his room number? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the funny thing was I, I had arthritic spinning fingers and I needed um, uh, cortisone injections regularly. And I, at that stage of the game, it was in the balance. And I thought, I'm waiting in line, and they'd washed our hands and said, just offer your hand and say, yeah, uh, ma'am. And I thought, I'll give her a wet fish because I'm trying to protect my fingers for, <laughs> for some vipers. <laughs> and she'll give me a wet fish and I'll be OK. Yeah. And she gave me the malachi crust. <laughs> Not a bit for England. Yeah. And my legs buckled. <laughs> and I thought, skulls curtsied. <laughs> 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 for those of us.
us that don't remember that centenary test, yeah. many of us are so familiar with your voice for 13 years on ABC Radio. Yeah. Is, there, is there one story or one incident that still to this day haunts you that wherever you go, listeners come up and say, tell me about this? Uh, Kelly, there is. Um, in 2006, I told a joke about a frog walking into a bank <laughs> and it went for three balls and uh, people keep coming. I can be in a urinal. I say, hey, Scarl. Me mate Keg's on the phone. Tell him the uh, tell him the frog joke. <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind? <laughs> Every and whenever I go to a function, the first question is Scarl, the frog joke. <laughs> and look, it's a good joke, yeah. but it, it's a oncer. And, and you know. People come up to me now, I, I was 13 years with ABC Grandstand Cricket and I loved every year. Mm. And they'd say, um, Scully, your best work was the frog joke. It was 2006. <laughs> <laughs> you mean I'm eight years past my best? <laughs> what about during that test, of course, you signed with Packers Revolution. Yes. Very secretly. And mm. people just can't believe, and I'm still trying to find out whether it was true, but they signed you individually and said, don't tell anyone. Was the secret kept? It was, because a bulk of the signings were done in New Zealand where we'd been um, uh, for a, a month or so previously. And no, at 3am, and I was with all the signees, I thought normally loose lips sink ships, but when you've signed for Kerry Packer, loose lips weren't, weren't a factor. Yep. So nobody leaked that I signed... Not even a week or an ad or something. Nothing. And, and at the end of that match, uh, Cricket Australia came in with our payment, which may have been $200 cash, and Austin Robertson, um, uh, an envoy of Kerry Packer, came in and said to three or four of us, he had an envelope, Skull, the, the uh, theatre tickets. And it was a cheque for $10,000 of goodwill. Wow. So I weighed up cash against the cheque. <laughs> <laughs> Normally cash wins. <laughs> <laughs> but not on this occasion. <laughs> what was that, 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 that cheque is... Like 50 <laughs> match payments. Oh, yeah. Wow. I mean, it was the most money wow. any of us, Spencer, had ever seen out of cricket in our lives. And, and of course, we'd won the game. Uh, we were suddenly getting money. Life was good. Yep. So we went to England, lost the Ashes 3-0. <laughs> <laughs> Worst, worst team in history. <laughs> Let me take you to Pune now just quickly. Yes. Then. Uh, it's a great thrill for you to see another uh, O'Keefe getting wickets without spinning the ball. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need a viper. No. <laughs> and I'm a big fan. I mean, for years, as Stephen's made his way, people have come up to me and said, um, Scully, you must be pleased with your son, <laughs> how well he's going. I said, no, I'm a double F O'Keefe. Yep. He's a one F. Mm -hmm. But in the last few days, I've just let it ride. <laughs> He come up, I say, how good was he? And I said, his mother and I are so proud. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I've ever met her. <laughs> but, guys, it's a great story because Stephen was raised in a fibro home at Hobartville, just out of Richmond, mm. New South Wales. His mother did the night shift at Hawkesbury Hospital. His father was in the RAF. Um, she'd work night shift and then drive him to cricket the next day. Um, he was a determined guy. I've spoken to family friends who said if he got a computer game, he would play it throughout the night to try and beat it mm. by dawn. This is a guy who, whose determination has got him to this situation. Mm. Um, and what a win. And it, he went out at lunchtime on day two, having got no wickets in that first spell. He, and he, he could have sat around the dressing room, sulked and got all negative. He said, no, nah, I've got to... And throughout his career, he said, how do I contribute to the winning of this game? He went out with the bowling coach mm. and bowled in the middle. That's the area I've got to hit, I know. He went back, didn't have lunch, walked out, got six for five. Brilliant. Mm. You have literally 45 seconds just yes. to, if we can, just in terms of the India experience, you have two there. We saw Matt Renshaw have a few problems. What's your experience? I toured India in 1966 with Australian schoolboys. When two batsmen walked out to bat, five of us padded up. When the wicket fell, whoever, whoever wasn't on the toilet walked out. <laughs> <laughs> A very flexible batting line. <laughs> Uh, Kerry, it's great to talk to you. It's great to have you here in the flesh. Great to listen to you on Triple M over the summer Thanks, as Tony. well. We hear more from you and love to have you in on this show as well. Stick around, though, if you wouldn't mind. Will do. We'll come back and wrap Thanks. it all up uh, and give you our champ of the week. Stay with us. <laughs>